a blessing Holy Ghost River keep on flowing in my soul Well there was a thirsty woman with a water pot that came To draw the clear cool water from Jacob's well one day There she met the Savior who quenched her from within And he gave her living water so she never thirsted One taste and then abundant life begins. Flow, river, flow, quench my thirsty soul. Flow, river, flow, cleanse and make me whole. I need a sweet refreshing, supernatural blessing. Holy Ghost River, keep on flowing in my Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we tend to look at the verses, break them down, bring them to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 31. And I've titled today's devotional, How to Choose the Right Wife. Throughout the Bible, there is much advice given from father to son. Proverbs chapter 31, however, relays a mother's counsel to her boy. Most likely, King Lemuel was a godly leader, as his name means belonging to God. His mother advised the king on how to continue to be a strong leader. As we see that Proverbs chapter 31 verses 3 through 9. In the rest of the chapter, she helps him with one of the most important decisions in his life. The mother helped her son know the important values to look for when picking the right wife. She knew that a wife could make or break a man's and family's success. The mother's advice did not include picking a woman for her beauty and sex appeal. Her suggestion was to pick a woman who was faithful to her husband, a hard worker, pure, moral, and industrious. A good wife should be virtuous. Beauty will change, but good character and morality will last a lifetime and be beneficial to many. Look at Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. That's Proverbs chapter 31, 
verse 10. According to this proverb, a virtuous woman can be relied upon and trusted. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11. A virtuous woman will do a husband good and make him a better man. That's Proverbs 31, verses 12 and 23. A virtuous woman will be industrious, always helping and providing for the needs of her husband and family. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verses 13 to 15. Proverbs 31, verse 17, and again in verse 27. A virtuous woman will look for meeting not only the family's current needs, but what will benefit them in the future. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verses 16 and 17. A virtuous woman is a hard worker. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verses 18 and 19, and, uh, chap and I'm sorry, verses 24 and 27. A virtuous woman is kind even to those outside her family. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verses 20 and 26. A virtuous woman provides for her own needs. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 22. A virtuous woman is honorable and has a strong character. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. A virtuous woman is wise. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. A virtuous woman is respected and relied on by her family, as Proverbs chapter 31, verse 20, verse 28. A virtuous woman is godly, as Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. This type of woman was not uncommon in the past. Today, perhaps because of the changing values of women of the 1970s, they are not as prevalent. Unfortunately, it has been drummed into many women's minds that they can do better than being a stay-at-home mother and wife. Many have been brainwashed into believing that being a housewife is beneath them and they should seek a career in which they are worthy and more important. Being a wife and mother is not a menial task. The awesome abilities and responsibilities given to women are the backbone of a family and nation. It is the mother who can mold young lives and strengthen families and eventually even society. She is the silent strength and selfless worker who may not get much limelight, but without her, families and society stumble and crumble, as can be seen today. Despite what the unisex movement tried to convince women into believing, men and women are different. Women have strengths and abilities that a man does not have, and vice versa. A man can do things a woman cannot. It does not imply that one sex is better than the other. Instead of trying to change their creative purpose and trying to be what they are not, society would benefit if the sexists would again not be confused about what their strengths and gifts are and fulfill the purpose and unique abilities God has given them. Since the confusion of the sexes proliferated, the divorce rate has skyrocketed. Many children now come from broken homes. Males and females are confused about who and what they are. An increasing number of couples are living together unmarried. Many children do not even know who their parents are. No better than God and making their own social guidelines have not worked. Humanity is suffering greatly. Man and woman must return to living the way God wants them to and to be the man or woman he desires them to be. Men and women, especially those that want to please God, should both be virtuous, content, and proud of who they are and to be the best they can be. Our thought for today is from Proverbs chapter 19, verse 4. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Before we get to our scripture, there's a word we need to understand. That word virtuous means a practitioner of duty, sexually pure, accomplished, and moral. 
And that brings us up to our scripture for today, which is Proverbs chapter 31. <clears throat> I'm going to read the entire chapter. Again, I am reading from the King James Version. Proverbs chapter 31, beginning in verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto woman, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. Say that again. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the staff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, for her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have gone virtu have, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. This has been Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. My brother David, the name of the program is King James Version Exposed. I would ask that she join us each day for our daily devotional time. And I also ask that you go on Facebook and give our uh, Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page. Uh, just click that like button and that will be a great encouragement to me. We're going to close out here with prayer and a song. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you place, placing praises and petitions before you, Lord. We thank you for our wives and for those that are still looking. Guide them to a virtuous wife, Father, to a virtuous woman. Father, we thank you for our families. Thank you for the opportunity to provide for them through your hands, Lord. For you provide us with all things that we need. Father, be with those that are suffering from any kind of illness, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Just put your healing touch upon them. Father, be with those that are facing the loss of a loved one. Just uh, grant your comfort to them and make your presence known to them. 
in ways that only you can do and in ways that they can see, feel, and understand. Father, thank you for the beauty of the night sky, the beauty of the sunrise, the beauty of the sunset, the majesty of the mountains, the strength that the oceans show us, and the peace that the rivers and streams give us. Father, for these things, speak of your glory and of your power. Father, thank you that your justice is always tempered with mercy. Father, thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross in our place and suffer the penalties of our sins and shortcomings so that we would not have to, that we might have fellowship with you once again. It's in his name that we pray these things. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the word, and write the word upon your heart. They claim the soul Bible has outlived its day, that there are some changes that need to be made. Let no man deceive Take your Bibles or turn with me to Matthew 24. Truth is determined by the test of time. Trust the old Bible with its knees and backs. Never mind those people who won't throw it out. Churches are drifting and falling away. We need the soul book more than ever today. Pampered with the Bible and written sacred. Oh, what will the children do? Our way of life is changing and people don't care. The signs of the end we seen everywhere. Trust the old Bible with its thieves and mouths. Never mind those people who want to throw it out. Church are drifting and falling away. We need the soul book more than ever today. They've criticized, maligned it, and slandered it too. Some say it's inferior and simply will not do. They've tried to replace it and shove it aside. But God is its author, He said it will abide. Trust the old Bible with its thieves and bounds. Never mind those people who want to throw it out. Churches are drifting and falling away. We need the soul book more than ever today. Jesus is coming to judge and decide. He will determine whose heart is right. The Bible is sacred, holy and grand. And those who defile it, oh, where will they stand? Trust the old Bible. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the Word, and write the Word upon your heart. Until next time.